Uh, this week, hundreds of thousands of students started classes at colleges and universities. And one thing is increasingly clear. By the time they graduate, most students are going to be leaving with a lot more than just a tacky polyester robe and a copy of Oh, The Places You'll Go that their te tearful aunt got them. <laughs> They'll be leaving with this. Seven of ten graduating students left college last year in debt. The total bill due for students in America tops one trillion dollars. That's right. Student debt in the U.S. is now bigger than debt from credit cards and auto loans and is second only to mortgages. Because legally, student debt is a special kind of debt. It is the most collectible kind of debt there is. It is non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. They will garnish your wages. They will intercept your, your tax refunds. They, they, they will sue you in court. Well, they won't stop there. They'll steal your wallet. They'll pawn your baby shoes. They will shrink themselves down to two inches high, hide in your pocket, and take that money back one dime at a time. <laughs> Student debt has tripled in the past decade. How did this happen? Well, more than 90% of student debt is subsidised by the federal government. And it all started with such good intentions. Here is one of the federal student loan programme's early champions. Poverty must not be a bar to learning. And learning must offer an escape from poverty. The federal student loan programme has now swollen to uncomfortable proportions. <laughs> one reason for this might be that in recent years, states have slashed funding for higher education by 23%. Public institutions have responded by raising tuition rates, forcing students to take out ever larger loans. Yummy. I'm looking at probably paying my loans until my son's in college and he was born in November. Michael is a high school science teacher and spends nearly half his monthly take-home pay on his student loans, which total $64,000. The family's high level of debt means they can't borrow money for a house. The mortgage broker told me in no uncertain terms that he couldn't do anything for me as long as I had my student loan debt, uh, which was a complete shock considering I worked through college, I had academic scholarship, I thought I did everything right. I, I got an education to, to be successful, to better myself, and the reality of it is, is I'm worse off than my peers. Universities are not these kind of collegiate, democratic, free speech hubs anymore. They're a corporate machine, they care about their image, they care about their admissions, they care about their funding, they don't care about what students think. We're not satisfied with the way that this country and with the way systems like higher education are being run, and we're prepared to get out on the streets and do something about that. Studying at university in England used to be free, but then tuition fees were introduced in 1998. In the last UK election in 2010, many students voted for the Liberal Democrats, the party that promised to axe tuition fees. But when they formed the coalition government with the Conservative Party, not only did they go back on their promise, annual tuition fees were tripled from three to nine thousand pounds. There's no easy way to say this. We made a pledge, we didn't stick to it, and for that I'm sorry. Tens of thousands of students and protesters took to the streets of London in anger. We're gonna fight these to the end. We're gonna fight these people to the end. Fight them to the death. In the months leading up to the UK May 7 general election, students have again been protesting across the UK. Struggling to get their voices heard, many have taken direct actions, like occupying their university campuses, to force those in charge to listen to their demands. 